already learned how to buy and sell money, either with orders or directly on the market. It's simplicity itself with ID System, our trading terminal. Now, there's nothing left to do but to identify the optimum moments to buy or to sell. A mere trifle. This trifle has tantalized traders over the centuries and our whole science has developed called technical analysis. The Western School of Technical Analysis has its roots in 19th century America. I describe technical analysis as a science. What do I mean by this? Well, one thing I mean is that it's governed by clear and rigid laws. We'll start by learning how to plot price charts using a computer, of course, and then we'll move on to draw other lines. What are they for? Well, these lines help us determine what will happen to price in the future. They also give us an insight into how long price will remain above or below these lines. Today we're going to examine these lines and how to plot them correctly. The simplest price chart is the tick chart. What exactly is a tick chart? Each new change in price is charted by a standard move across the chart. The chart takes no account of time, so the more times that price changes in, say, a minute, the more moves are made across the chart. This means that from 2 to 5 p.m. GMT, when the Frankfurt, London and New York exchanges are all open, there can be up to 10 changes in price in one minute. And late in the evening, at 10 o'clock in New York, when the world's main exchanges are closed, there'll be far, far fewer price changes. So price is strangely warped and distorted on tick charts. The tick charts on ID system, as well as those on other trade terminals, do not distort time. Each change in price is charted at the time it takes place. What we have here is a line chart, but one that charts price over a very limited period of time. What are tick charts for? Such charts are good reference points and are featured on the trading terminal to instantly inform our traders of any price change on the markets, but they are not used in technical analysis. So what kind of charts are used in technical analysis? If you look it up in the dictionary, the word bar is a thin piece of metal and we build our charts with bars. We'll show you how to plot a price chart now. You already know that Forex is a round-the-clock market, not forgetting the days off. And we've already mentioned that the trading day by international consensus comes to an end at 21.30 GMT. In reality, however, professional traders view the trading session as finishing at 2100. Why is this? Bear with us and you'll see for yourself. With a bar chart, all the information about exchange price for any one day is shown on a vertical line. Let's look at the monitor, a heartbeat after the chiming of Big Ben, marking the beginning of the day, and we'll see the first key price that's recorded on our bar. This is the open price, and it's marked as a little nodule on the left of our unformed bar. Punctually, at the end of the day, an instant before the clock strikes, we look at the monitor again and we see a second currency price. This price is the close price and is marked as a second nodule on the right of the bar. The ceiling that price reached this day is known as the high price and is the third key price. There are no highs without lows, of course, and the price floor or low price on the day is also recorded. We join the high and the low points with a vertical line, and there you have it, the bar. 
a pretty widespread charting method. The four prices on the bar are referred to as O, C, H and L on the chart. And day after day, or hour after hour, bar after bar is laid out, marking time with a standard step to the right, creating a reliable price chart. They've been monitoring and studying exchange price behaviour on the Japanese archipelago for centuries. Rice prices have been recorded since as far back as the Middle Ages. If we want to draw a bar like the Japanese, we make the distance between close and open into a white rectangle and the high and low prices are joined to it with vertical lines. This new figure is called the Japanese candlestick, known to some traders as the candle. The rectangle is called the body and the vertical lines are the shadows. The candlestick body can change colour. If close is higher than open, as in our case, the body is white and it's rising. If close is lower than open, the candlestick body is black and it's falling. Many traders find the candlestick more visually appealing and easier to interpret. Take a look at the candlestick chart. With an uptrend, the chart brightens, and with a downtrend, the chart on the contrary darkens. When price is in a range, it flashes before our very eyes. We'll return to trends later. History has provided us with a fascinating case study. Two independent groups of traders analyzed the same phenomenon over a long period of time. They did not exchange any information and yet they came to the same conclusions. In Japan, where the candlestick was invented, a strict isolationist policy was in force until 1862 and this is why Japanese traders could know nothing about the American bar. Because of these restrictions and because of geography, candlesticks and bars were created completely independently of each other. Although they were developed at different ends of the world, both bars and candlesticks use the same four main prices in their construction. Open, close, high and low. This supports the thesis that exchange price behaviour is objective in character and submits to rigid laws. Technical analysis is involved in the study and application of these laws. The concept of trend is crucial to the technical approach to market analysis. Every tool that the trader uses, whether it's support and resistance levels, chart patterns, moving averages, trend lines, whatever, are applied in order to achieve one super task. The trader, that's you, uses them to identify and monitor a trend to allow them to do further work in its channel. Let me digress a little here. I said work rather than play. When you play the market, it's very easy to lose money, though it's not impossible to win. But when you're working on the market, the only possibility is to earn money. You'll often come across advice like, never trade against the trend, or the trend is your friend. So we'd better define a trend. Generally speaking, the trend is the direction the market is moving in. But in my opinion, this definition is an overgeneralization. In real life, no market moves in a straight line. A market moves in zigzags which resemble waves. Price rises and falls. 
it's the directional dynamics of these maximums and minimums which determine trend. The dynamics of these peaks and troughs, whether they're ascending, descending or horizontal, tells us about the character of the trend. If each subsequent peak and trough is above the previous one, we have ourselves an uptrend. It follows that if each subsequent peak and trough is lower than the preceding one, we've got a downtrend on our hands. If the peaks and troughs are at the same level, this is a range. Always remember that price can move in three directions, up, down and sideways. Many beginners make the elementary mistake of thinking the market can only move up or down. And it might surprise them to learn that, even according to the most conservative estimates, for about one third of all trading time, price is neither rising nor falling generally. This kind of price movement is known as a trading range. This sideways movement caused by similar up and down fluctuations reflects a period when price is in balance, when the parity between supply and demand for a given good is practically constant. Charles Dow, one of the earliest pioneers of technical analysis, called this movement a line. Trading on the exchange is a piece of cake. Any trader has just three options – to buy to take a long position, to sell, to take a short position, or in general to do nothing, to wait, to sit on the fence. If the market is trending up, it's time to buy. If it's down, sell. But if the market is flat, the best course usually is to do nothing. But how can we learn when to do what? The answer is simple. Get into technical analysis. The majority of its laws and findings are the result of the blood, sweat and tears of numerous traders. These lessons were learned the hard way. And remember, the wise man learns from the mistakes of others. The fool learns from his own, if he learns at all. And that's straight from the horse's mouth. As well as being able to move in three directions, the trend can be one of three degrees. These are the primary or major trend, the secondary or intermediate trend, and the minor trend. These terms relate to the temporal nature of the trend and were introduced by Charles Dow. He defined the major trend as existing on the market for more than a year. These long-term price movements are shaped by fundamental factors. Let's take oil as an example. Consumption is growing each year. Reserves are limited. The situation in the Middle East as the main oil supplier continues to grow more unstable and alternative sources of energy are still inadequately developed. The result of all this is that the price of oil has grown steadily over the last few years and we can see this on the line chart. Dow defined the intermediate trend as lasting from three weeks to three months. Minor trends last no more than two to three weeks at the very most. Each trend type is made up of lower degree trends. In a major uptrend, the market can pause at any moment to react against or correct the trending movement for about a couple of months and then move on to renew its ascent again. This intermediate correction, in turn, will be made up of a series of shorter rises and falls and this repeats again and again. On the one hand, the trend is part of a larger trend, but on the other hand, it also includes component elements in itself. 
you need to have a complete appreciation of the difference between these three kinds or temporal degrees of trend. If someone asks you what the actual trend of the euro against the dollar is, before answering them you have to ask him what time scale he's thinking about. Misunderstandings arise because different traders are working with and concentrating on different degrees of trend depending on their trading style. For the position trader who keeps positions open over a long period of time, the price movement over a few days and sometimes even for a few weeks is of little importance. He trusts in the future and sometimes has good reason to. For the day trader who opens and closes his position within one day and works with a time scale of an hour or less, two or three days is already a substantial length of time and the price movement over this period will represent the main trend for him. This is why an insight into the different degrees of trend is absolutely vital. It's this insight that enables you to determine the direction of the current price movement and as I said before this is your primary task. We've spent rather a lot of time discussing the theory of trend in general and the direction of trend in particular. I'm sure that many of you are thinking that it would be very useful if the representation of the current situation could include a backlog of past information. Let me tell you, you're not the first to reflect on this. Bars and Japanese candlesticks are not the only types of charts available to the trader. No less than 130 years ago, Japanese traders developed the sublimely simple Renko chart type. Renko filters out the noise and chaos of the marketplace, leaving a clear chart of significant market movements. This particular chart type is available, amongst others, with a few clicks of the mouse on our charting software, Rumors. You'll find full information on Renko in another film. In the meantime, after noting this new spoke in a wheel of technical analysis, we'll move on. We've already repeated more than once that price moves in zigzags and that by plotting the progress of the maximums and minimums of these zigzags determines the trend. It's now time to start naming these peaks and troughs that help us map the trend. A horizontal line drawn through the last price trough, the last local minimum, is known as a support level. Support is a level or area on the chart below the market where price has fallen to a level where enthusiasm for buying has become strong enough to counterbalance selling pressure. In a second scenario, a horizontal line drawn through the last price peak is known as the resistance level. Resistance is a level or area on the chart above the market where enthusiasm for selling has become strong enough to withstand buying pressure. The history of these terms is fascinating. There was a time when a speculator on the exchange could only make a profit on a rise in prices. His only option was to buy at a low price and sell at a higher price. And it came to pass that the level which bolsters price, which prevents it from falling further, was given the name support. And the level which impedes price and prevents it from rising higher became known as resistance. Nowadays, my friend, it's all a matter of perspective. For a long time, we've been able to make money on a fall in the price of exchange commodities but the names have remained unchanged. 
There are, of course, periods of time when price neither rises above the resistance level nor falls below the support level. We say here that price is in a trading range, that the market is flat. It is this circumstance precisely that foremost technical analysts John Murphy and Jack Schwager advise doing nothing. But what should we do if this trading range lasts a few years or even a decade? Maybe you think that this never happens. Then you're mistaken. Let me assure you that it certainly does. The British pound was in a range between 1.4 and 1.72 for 11 years. Once, in 1998, there was an unsuccessful attempt to make a breakout on the resistance level. And once, in 2001, there was an unsuccessful attempt to break out through support. Ignoring short-term resistance and support level breakouts, the range width was 3,200 points. It may seem a lot. But believe me, this is treading water for such a serious currency over such a long period of time. If we'd had prior knowledge of this range, we could have become millionaires a few times over. Please understand that a trading range can last any length of time. You can find them on any time scale. A minute, an hour, a day, or a week. The point and figure chart is the perfect aid for identifying the precise levels of a flat market. The euro chart that you see before you now is of a very ordinary type, bars or candles. Now here is the same data displayed in a point and figure chart. In this type of chart, the support and resistance levels are very easy to identify. So you can see what lengths traders have gone to to clarify the situation on the market in order to make more money you'll find full information of this less common but very useful point and figure chart in a later film too. But what forces form these support and resistance levels? Of course, the relationship between supply and demand plays the primary role. But in exchange trading, the psychological state of the participants in the buying and selling process, and here I mean you, the traders, play a significant part too. Mm-hmm. You set these support and resistance levels yourself. This leads to many interesting outcomes. For example, after there's been a breakout on a resistance level, the level very often transforms into a strong support level later on. John Murphy created an entertaining psychological account of this wonderful transformation. Let me carefully talk you through it. I want you to imagine all of the traders in the world and divide this happy band into three groups those who have bought goods, which in our case is currency, and we'll call this first group the bulls. Those who have sold goods, these are the bears. And the third group of traders is peacefully sitting on the fence. They've not opened a position, and for the meantime they are simply watching the market. At this moment, price is just below the resistance level. By the way, where do you think the names bulls and bears came from? These terms came from the frenetic exchange pits of the American market. Have you ever been to a rodeo or a bullfight? <laughs>